Live. Wow, my clapper didn't work. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday interview. Every Tuesday, we are here to bring leadership, to bring value. And in today's market, we definitely need leadership. Uh, everybody does. So as uh, our special guest, we have Kristen Messerly. She's going to lead the second half of the call where we're going to talk about what is the technology powering connection and communication for both your prospects and your clients and your team. So what's up, Kristen? Hey, thanks for having me. Right on. Good to have you. You noticed Renee made all that noise. So I said, how you doing, Kristen? And big picture of Renee popped up. So, <laughs> so, so it's time to bring Renee Rodriguez on stage. He wants to make sure he gets to go first. What's up, Renee? What's going on, guys? What's going on, man? Uh, so, bro, thank you so much for making time to bring your leadership to this call today. Uh, I want to I want to frame. Not going to get into the the health of today's issue. I want to talk and hear a mortgage coach talk about how do we turn this in this chaos into an opportunity. And and I think <coughs> the first thing that we need to acknowledge is that. We are in an industry as mortgage professionals that is just so blessed and so lucky. So many people don't get to go to work. Like it's not a choice whether they go to work or not. They don't get to go to work. Their office is shut. Their building is shut. What they do for a profession is shut down. And they're having to reinvent what they do and how they do it because they don't know what the future has to hold. If you're a loan officer, guys, you are in an industry where not only are you blessed, to have the potential of having your most successful, your most financially successful weeks, days, and months. But you're also in a profession where you get to unlock stimulus for families that need to lower their monthly payments. I mean, low interest rates, refinances equals cash. Whether the family wants to spend that um, any way they want, whether they want to invest that to pay off their mortgage faster, we are, we are literally in a profession where we get to help people retire faster. And, and when I interview the best loan officers, I'm getting ready to uh, uh, push a video called Josh Metal, March Madness, Refi Playbook. And, and it's gonna cover like, what are the questions he's having? What are the strategies he's delivering? What is the scripting he's using? So, so guys, we're, we're blessed. Now, with that said, we need to be better leaders to ourselves. We need to be better leaders to our team and we need to be better leaders to clients. So I thought having Ren Renee Rodriguez come in and bring some of the concepts from Amplify would just be a way, great way to kick off this call. So with that said, Renee, how do you want to take it from here? Do you wanna speak to us for a little bit or do you have some slides to share? How do you wanna roll? Well, I, thanks Dave and thanks for doing this and thanks for inviting me. It's always good to see you, always good to see my dear friend Kristen. And so, um, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna share a concept and a couple things with you. I'm actually in the last three days have been neck deep in preparing videos and content and building online products and making a personal pivot right now. This is a unprecedented time right now. This is something that I don't think anybody's have ever seen. We are living uh, a historical moment uh, that we're gonna be reading about and talking about, sharing stories about to our kids and grandchildren. And this is a really, really fascinating time. And so I want to talk not about the financial markets. That's not my expertise, not my lane. I don't want to talk about, in essence, um, the mortgage process. That's you guys. You guys are you guys are the best. We need to listen in there. I want to talk about what's hap happening right now emotionally and behaviorally in the marketplace and what we can do. We have to move fast theory into actionable insights right now. We have to say, okay, what does this theory mean and what can I do right away <clears throat> with my team, with my loan officers, with my families, all those kinds of things. And so that, those are the things that I want to, I want to, uh, talk about. The other thing I want to share right now is I want to fast forward some things that are going to happen here in the near future. If you're a leader watching this call, if you're a parent watching this call, there is going to be a come a time in the near future that you're going to be judged based on how you acted and how you behaved during this kind of time. You're gonna be either somebody who contributed to panic or you were somebody that was a voice of reason and thought about preparedness. I think this, this whole concept of preparedness versus panic are very different things, but so many people that are acting in a prepared manner are viewing it as panic. And so we have to be able to see the distinct difference between those two elements. And so I wanna start with something that I have 
worked with for gosh, close to 18 years now. And it's this little thing you see behind me. It was actually the topic of my first TED talk last year called the courage scale. And I, I look at this, not from this esoteric thought of courage and this, this sort of this light view, but as it gives a structure to the behavioral process that we go through, through change and through uh, uh, in the emotional piece of this whole deal. Now, before I even get into that, if you're feeling yourself uh, shutting down or dismissing the emotional side of this, you are missing a big aspect of leadership. You're missing a big aspect of life and what it means to truly move people. And so the, if, if life was this Vulcan sort of one plus one equal two all the time, every strategy we put out there works, that we were logical, man, this would be just a very different world, but it's not. One plus one in an emotional environment doesn't work because of that hidden piece of people's irrationality when it comes to emotion. Now, I do want to say before I, I talk about this is that my heart and uh, prayers go out to those who uh, are suffering from this, those all over the world that, have, that are being affected by this, and especially a lot of the, the people from an economic standpoint that are being affected by this. This is a real thing, and it is causing some real changes. So I want to, I want to just tee this up here. This was a scale developed by Dr. David Hawkins, gosh, I think it was 16, 17, 18 years ago. And he was a world famous psychiatrist, world famous medical doctor. And he left that practice to study these different states of being here. And you, you see all of these states of being, he assigned a logarithmic number to him, stating how much energy or how much vitality was given off when we're in that state of being. And so when I look down here at the bottom, I see uh, the, the death and death is at a zero. And it made sense to me right away. Death is at zero. I guess we're not real influential when we're dead. And so as we move above that, we see shame and guilt. Now that had 20 and 30 in it uh, as a number. And so that made a lot of sense because all my coaches use shame and guilt to try to motivate me. You know, the you suck, run faster. And I try to run faster and I dribble the ball off my foot. And all of us would agree that we don't really feel energized when we're being shamed and guilted. Now we may feel a certain spike of energy to try to avoid getting shamed and guilted again, but that isn't a sustainable way of managing that. And so that shame and guilt were at 20 and 30. Now, when I saw 50 at, at, or apathy at 55, that's where I got confused because I saw apathy 50, grief 75, fear 100, anger 150. And I thought to myself, I'd almost rather not feel anything. I'd rather be apathetic than to be crying, scared, and angry. Well, he, he looked at me and said, Renee, think about this for a minute. You can take an apathetic person, walk them over to a bridge and throw them over. And guess what? They don't care. You can take an apathetic person and give them all the best tools, all the best training, and they don't care. And so, but what happens if you take an angry person and try to throw them over a bridge? Well, you know that they're, they're feeling alive at that point. They might actually fight you back and try to throw you over that bridge. And so that is when it made sense to me that this anger and fear were very close to this line of courage. And this line of courage is what we call the dividing line between the taking side of life and the giving side of life being above the line or below the line. And so as we look at above the line, openness, willingness, reason, logic, love, joy, peace, enlightenment, all of these things up here are above the line. Now, here's, I want you to think about this. How many people can you think of, if you're watching this, how many of you can think of somebody that lives a majority of their life down below this line? I think all of us can, right? And now ask yourself, do these people give you energy or do they take it away from you? They take it away. In fact, how fast do they take it away? It's usually almost instant. You can be on the phone, have, or you can be having a great day, and that person that you um, is below the line calls you, and you see their name, and all of a sudden, you feel yourself below the line. Or the same is true above the line. Somebody that lives a majority of their life above here in openness, willingness, reason, logic, joy, peace, enlightenment, where you can be having a horrible day, and all of a sudden, they call you, and all of a sudden, your energy is high. So thinking about where we are on the scale, here's the best part that he talked about, is where you are on the scale, number one, is a choice right? This is something that we, ch we choose. And this is why we say that you are the CEO of your life, your space, your thoughts, your energy, your work quality, your dreams, your future. All those things are something that you decide. And, but here's the other piece. Think about what you just told me when I said, think of a person that lives in life below the line. And when you see their name that you go down, what that means is, is that this is contagious. And that's what I wanted to talk about here today. I, I, there are plenty of people out there right now talking about doom and gloom and what to expect and how long they think this is going to last and what's going to happen and what's going to happen and, and markets are going to shut down and all that stuff. People have got that part covered. I don't want to participate in that. And am I going to watch? Am I going to pay attention? Absolutely. But what I'm going to focus on, and this is why leaders need to do this. You're called a leader because there aren't that many of you. Brian Tracy one time told me that one of the best sales trainers in the world, he said, Renee, you cannot build companies uh, based on superstars. 
You can't build a company surrounded by superstars. And I said, why? He said, Renee, there just aren't that many of them. And I thought to myself, this is wow. Okay. That's why we need leadership. That's why we need people to step up and lead the way. I had some conversations with the morning, some of the, the, my clients that I've been coaching and I, and they were wondering, what do we do? I said, well, this is the time that you need structure. You need order and you need predictability. You need to be able to set the tone of what's going on. This is not the time that you back away. This is a time for bold action towards the things that drive your business and create clarity for the people that work for you, not the time that you sit back and wait and see. The job of leadership, hear me right, the job of leadership, and this is by Harvard, okay? The number one task is management of attitude. Why? Because our attitude drives our behavior and our behaviors lead to results. And if we are in a sales world, and we're in a world that our behaviors are very specific and outlined to lead to an end result, but yet our attitude and our energy, or we're below the line, is taking us to another behavior like constantly scrolling Facebook and looking at the negative news or making sure everybody understands how horrible this is. We're getting away from the activities that drive not only our business, but keep this economy going forward. So there's a big sales lesson in here, but this is the, the call to leadership to be able to say, where am I? What am I posting? Where, where's the energy? And here's the other piece I want to talk about too. I hear a lot of talk about the negative media. And it's ironic that we're in a social media world where we also are the media. I know mo most people are looking through their phones and social media and Facebook and Instagram for news than they are a, a TV. And so as we look at that, we say, okay, so if I'm contributing to this media, what am I posting and resharing? What are the things that I'm contributing? Is it something that's above the line? Is it below the line? Now, sometimes we need to be scared of something because that'll get us to act, right? And if we can get angry about something, sometimes it'll get us to act. But when we start getting stuck down here, that is where we get into problems. And so what I've been urging and challenging my clients and leaders to say, okay, if you need to post something that's quote unquote negative or just the truth, follow it with what your insight is on top of it. What are the behaviors that you're gonna expect out of your team? What are things that you can do? There are so many creative leaders out there, so many creative leaders out there that are talking about what's going on without sharing ideas without sharing things that we can do. But I do, I, one thing I know for sure is that every single leader out there right now that is successful in thriving in a market like this is very clear about their daily actions and their daily routines. They're clear for their teams to understand what's going on. Even Dave, you and I, we meet in the morning and we try to meet in the afternoon just to hold each other accountable. Uh, I've got other people that we have constant meetings throughout the day saying, hey, what's going on? What's, what's happening in your neck of the woods? And so I wanna pause there for a minute and just see if you have any questions on this piece and how it might apply to what it is we're talking about. So, so guys, I, I was fortunate. I went to Amplify, so I have these little, you know, pocket cards, and I reference this. I use this. I've watched your TED Talk multiple times. I've shared it with my family. I think this is one of those really important concepts uh, that's never mattered more. So we put a link to a picture of this down below in comments. So if you're watching this in Facebook, you can print this out. And maybe it's not Renee's card, but you can print this out. And it might be a while, it might be a few weeks, a few months until we can, you know, we kick up some events. But very important concept. Kristen, you've heard this concept before. Any questions for Renee or anything that you want to say at this point? I don't think so, but I, yeah, I just absolutely love this. I think that, you know, uh, whether you're thinking about leading your team or leading your network, everyone is looking for leadership and everyone is behaving in such an emotional way. And so um, I think we all have a personal responsibility and opportunity to control our narrative and the narrative that we're, you know, we're sharing with others. And so um, when during this time, I think, you know, everyone is turning so much more to social media and especially as time goes on, we're going to find how much more important it is to think about digital um, communication and social media as part, a critical part of our marketing and um, the way that we're staying in touch with partners and, and consumers. And I think, you know, everyone is looking for um, for an authentic voice there and and you you have an opportunity to either share things as Renee is talking about that are below the line or above the line and and that's making an impact on on people and the way that they view you as a leader as well so um, so I think there's some you know practical ways that we can 
think about how how to expand your brand during this time, um, but doing so in a way that that is above the line and very positive. So I, I love what you're sharing, Renee. And I think, Kristen, with what you yeah. talk about bringing the, a lot of structure and data and research and time to a time like this, it's more and more critical because to get us to that right place, that logical side of our minds, we need structure, order, and predictability. And I think that, I mean, this is no more of a better time even for the work that, that you're doing. And I, I wanna share one more thing too on this. And I'm, I made a decision a long time ago to go against the grain on a lot of things in social media. And one of those things is fighting and resisting that which will get a lot of likes. And unfortunately, the things that I watch that, that get a lot of the likes and the shares are things that are controversial, not real thought through, what I would call simple sugar type of material. And something that takes a little bit of thought, a little bit of time, a little bit of energy tends to go by the wayside. Something that might seem a little positive. And when I say positive, I'm not talking Pollyanna. I am not a, a Pollyanna person that's gonna ignore what's going on. I'm talking about what I can control. To me, that's positive. Because if you think in life, there's things you can control and there's things there's ma that matter. But the overlap of the two is the only thing that we should really be focused on, which is a very small little part in the middle of what we can control that actually matters. And to me, the, these types of things need to be shared and the, we have to change the tide somehow. Leaders have to be the ones to look past beyond the platitude, the cliches, and into real things that are gonna actually give people behavioral things that they gotta do. Most people don't want that kind of information because it requires personal change. And personal change is typically resisted. And when we resist that personal change, we're resisting the call, the leadership that we need to have. And so we need more than ever leaders to step up and be strong and push these kinds of things so that people understand in context what's going on. Prepare, be safe, be smart, keep your distance, wash your hands, do all the things you gotta do. And now, if you have money, spend it with people that need the work. If you need, you can grow your business exponentially right now. If you have it, instead of holding back, being fearful and, and spreading things that are just causing more fear. Love that. And, and, and here's the thing, guys. People change when extreme things happen. You know, like when, you, when people really change their thinking, they change their habits, it's something extraordinary happened that creates that shift. And, and in the mortgage business, not only are we blessed that we're in a business that is thriving, and we're in a business that provides economic relief to families, and, and we're driving a stimulus package called a refi in the market, but, but here's what we also know. We've been in a business that's having this digital transition that's taking place, where using video strategically makes sense. Uh, being active on social media in a way that's right for your personality and right for your business goals. Um, using things like Zoom. Everybody who's watching this right now, you're, whether you're watching it directly on the Zoom platform or you're watching it on the Facebook Live platform or you're watching a recording this in our YouTube channel, you are using technology to learn. I am using technology to bring leadership to you. And, and everybody knows that we, we, we have to make this digital transition. So, so Renee, what I'd love to do for the next five, 10 minutes before we bring Kristen in is, is really drive how to make change. Like for the loan officers that are like, this is it. I, it's never been a better time for me to adopt and upgrade my practices using technology and creating this ultimate digital experience for both the families I serve and the team that I lead. So walk us through some ideas and maybe some of your frameworks that would, would make change happen faster and, and help people turn this challenge into an opportunity of growth. So I go back to the basic stuff. When, it, when, it, when times like this happen, <clears throat> let's go back to the basics. Are you eating right? Are you sleeping? Where's your stress level at? What's happening? So those are basic physical things, right? Are you getting to the gym? All this stuff. I go to the gym at three o'clock today. In fact, not go to the gym. I got to go to my living room. And that's my, that's my new gym right now. And so, but let's go back to the sales basics right now. We are, all of you watching this are in a for-profit business, okay? That means that you have to drive revenue. And revenue is an equation. In the mortgage industry and in sales, it's an equation. If you want to make paper and I want to make this product, I got to go cut a tree down to then go through a process. And I can't negotiate the, the tree cutting process. I have to cut the tree down. In sales, it's the same exact thing. There are six things that have to happen. For you to do this and I want you to write this name down if you're watching this the name papcar p-a-p-c-a-r okay p-a-p-c-a-r 
That is an acronym for the six money-making activities. And this is so basic, so basic, but also so ignored, especially in a refi boom. Because refi booms can create this consoling illusion that we're actually creating value. But right now we are in the right time at the right place and you've got to capture that value. But when this starts to slow down, we have to go out and create business. And it's only created through six activities. And, and this is simple. I'm just going to give them to you. P-A-P-C-A-R. That's prospecting. We have to prospect to get leads. I don't care how you do it. If you use marketing to prospect, prospect you've got to pick up the phone. Right now, no one's picking up phones. They're, they're using social media as a cop-out to selling in conversations. They're putting things there and hopefully people will call them. How about pick up the phone? Call your realtors. That is a, that's a small club to be a part of. If everyone's thinking about refinances and you're thinking about your realtors, call them. Ask them how to do them. Call a CPA. It's tax season coming up. They're probably stressed out. Call your financial advisors. Call insurance agents. Call people that are there and just talk to them. Remind them what's going on. I, all that stuff is critical. And now to be able to do that, your goal should be to set an appointment right? That's the second, that's the second part. Set the appointment because we forget that these things happen ex accidentally, but if we drive them, they happen faster and more efficiently. So prospect to set an appointment. And then when you show up at that appointment, that's when you can present value. And Dave, this is where mortgage coach is such a critical, essential tool to any loan professional out there right now, because it is a presentation tool to be able to show you here's where you are now and here's where you could be. And here's a plan to get there. Structure, order, predictability. And so you have to be able to have some sort of way of presenting value of who you are, what you believe, and then a process to be able to go do that. Prospecting appointments, presentation. Now, once you've done that, there's got to be a close of some sort. You've got to close business. And this is not the time to think, well, I don't want to be pushy. Well, in 10 years, your clients right now will either thank you for helping them get into one of the fastest wealth building opportunities there is, or they're going to get mad at you for saying, why didn't you tell me how this worked? You have one or two camps to be in. And so I, I'm pushing from a sales perspective, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, listen to the Josh Metals, listen to the Jeremy Forciers, listen to the Get Kelly Zitlows and Denise Donahue's, all the people that are on in the network and in your community about strategies, about where and who. But you've got to drive appointments to be able to present that value so that you can close on something. And then the A, if it's Pat Carr, would be aftercare. So many people forget the aftercare. And aftercare is reminding somebody why they made this decision to go with you. And you can automate that process. You can have people help you support it or just a phone call, handwritten letter. All those types of things are there. Great for aftercare. And of course, if you've done that right, you've achieved the wow experience, which you can then ask for referrals. So prospecting appointments, presentation, closing, aftercare, and referrals. That is the structure of how to sell. That is your sales process. That is your job description. I was telling leaders this morning on the call, I asked them, I said, do you believe that those are the only six ways they make money? And they started laughing and go, yeah, it actually is. And I said, do you want a productive company? And they said, well, yeah, of course. I said, so the, wouldn't you agree that, the, that productivity could be measured to the adherence to that process? And the further you stray from those six activities, the less productive you are and the more cost there is. And it's like this aha moment of saying that. Now, this is an aha to mortgage or real estate because there's an underlying belief system that people think, well, loan officers are loan officers are going to be how they are. I'm proposing, and I have been proposing for 18 years that that has to change, especially now more than ever. They need guidance. They need direction. They need boundaries. Any relationship with no boundaries is a toxic one. Imagine a relationship with no boundaries. Imagine a football game with no boundaries. It'd be boring. Nobody would want to watch. Think about the need right now for boundaries and the need for communicating what is in, what is out, what is acceptable, and what is not acceptable. Churches are built on boundaries and people put their heart and soul into a church. The best teams have clear boundaries. Belief systems have boundaries. You as an organization, as leaders need to define, are you an above the line organization? Are you below the line? And to get above the line, what's the structure, order, and predictability that you have to put in place so that people know that they're in or they're out? Bold action is what's needed right now. Not sitting back and waiting for something to happen. This is the time to get out there and do something about it. This is the time that they need you to stand up and lead. Communicate what you believe. Not to sit back and say, well, we'll see where we land. I'm already going to tell you where they're going to land. They're going to land where everybody else that is not taking action is going to land. So you got to ask yourself, what do you want? 
Boom. So, so Renee, I want to, I want to make sure I close it out and hand off to Chris in the next five minutes, but are there any other Amplify leadership concepts that you want to share before we uh, move into how to use tech to connect and communicate? You know, I, I'll say this is the lack of clarity right now in expectation is, is rampant. People don't know how to act. And this is not because people are stupid. This is because people are stressed. And as leaders, we need to understand that when people get stressed, they move into a protective part, survival part of their brain called the reptilian brain or what we call system one. And system one sees to the end of our fingertips, periphery goes away. We don't think strategically. Right now, if I'm in this room and a fire started, I will go into system one and I will find a way through this window that's right in front of me. I'm not going to be thinking about what's happening next week or the week after. I'm thinking about how do I get out of this burning building? Now, from a physiological standpoint, that is where people's brains are at. And those are the resources they have to tap into. And until somebody comes in and creates that structure for that brain to calm down and allow access, cortical access, I'm talking about physiological access to the part of the brain that thinks strategically into the future, the prefrontal lobe, the neocortex, all these things that were designed for human beings, not animals. Someone's got to create that structure. Someone's got to have the courage to step up and act and create the plan. And then I want you to write these words down to care enough to be unreasonable. I want to say that again. You have to care enough to be unreasonable when somebody, and this is where teams are going to decide who's in and who's out. If you lay out a plan, we talk about what's called the DAT. What's up with DAT? D-A-T, the daily activity tracker. This is basic stuff. Basic. Daily activity tracker. How many dials did you make? How many talk to's did you have? How many appointments did you set? And how many leads did you generate? Tally those up, show them to your manager. It doesn't have to be any more difficult than that. If you want to have fun, do it as a team. Put a $20 bill, competition, who has the most, whatever you got to do. But we know that talk to's, lead to appointments, appointments lead to presentations, presentations lead to closings. As you put all that together, you got to drive what you can control. You can't only focus on what's been measured as a historical metric. Lagging versus leading indicators. Lagging indicators, well, right now, lagging indicators are depressing and disempowering because guess what? A lagging indicator would be how many deals have you closed? You're not going to go in and wow somebody with saying, wow, your sales are low. They're going to go, excuse me, no shit, I know this. You know how I know? Because my, my, my bank account has already told me. That's a lagging indicator. Oh, you're, you, hey, do you know that you're last on the list of all the, all the loan officers? Yeah, thanks, genius. I know that. It's a below the line thing because you don't have a better way of talking about a leading indicator, which means, hey, how many phone calls did you make today? Zero. All right, well, let me, let me fast forward the future for you. You continue on that plan. You're not going to make any sales. And so, we change that plan in the next hour or we're going to have a conversation tomorrow because you may be on the wrong team. You're welcome to fail somewhere else. I'm just not going to allow you to fail with me because you believed in me. You came to work for me. And in the future, you will judge my leadership. And I refuse to have a conversation where I failed you. So today we succeed. We're going to get on the phones, a phone. And then you listen, did it convert to an appointment? And if they suck on the phone, you know where to train. Go to a mortgage coach, get some scripts, put them on there and watch. If then that gets better, did they get to the presentation? What's their presentation sounds like? If that sucks, go to mortgage coach, follow some presentations, give them a tool and watch. Now they call appointment presentation. Usually when you get past presentation, everything's good. Now, if they got crappy 1003s, you got to I'll talk to the experts on that one. My job is all the way up to that application. I don't do anything after that, but as leaders care enough to be unreasonable. Beautiful, Renee. So for those who want to learn more about the Courage Scale, there is a TED Talk. You can Google it. I'll put a link down below. You go to cur cur CourageScale.com, actually. It'll take you to the TED Talk and a download, too. There you go. You get the download. Super valuable. Notice that the top place that you can be is enlightenment. And, and think about that. In today's market, rates are low. We can bring economic stimulus by unlocking lower rates, monthly payments, and then we can enlighten people on how that monthly savings can actually be a life-changing amount of money and they can pre their, prepay their mortgage faster. So every family gets a total cost analysis now more than ever, not only because it enlightens the family, but because it's the fastest and most efficient way for you to do business. So let's transition the conversation 
to like, how do we use technology to bring leadership to families? And how do we bring leadership to our team? And what are the different tech that top producers are using in today's market? Uh, Kristen Messerly is going to facilitate the next 30 minutes on that topic. Uh, Kristen, we did have Keith Collins join us. Uh, right before we went live, he actually asked me a question that I was like, oh, wow, this is very on point. So Keith, we'll bring you in in the last 10, 15 minutes of the call and have you ask your question. And maybe, you know, after you hear Kristen unpack some of the tech that's being used, uh, you might have more questions. Kristen Besserly, welcome. All right, great. Thank you so much. And this is um, so good. I was taking tons of notes from Renee. Thank thanks, Renee. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about, like, so I posted something on Mortgage Coach, um, the mastermind group on Facebook, and I, I'm working on an article that I'm hoping to publish today or tomorrow, just about how to, um, how people are responding in um, taking the opportunity to make this digital transition, take it a little bit further in order to run their businesses in a way that is going to still be sustainable through a period of, of more social isolation. And so if we can, um, you know, I, I want to walk through some really basic forms of technology that, that can, I, I think as Renee was talking about, just making sure you have systems and structure in place in order to set yourself up for success. The same thing goes for how we communicate and how we approach the way that we, we run our businesses. And I think sometimes, even if it is, it does seem very basic when it comes to the fact of, you know, how, how do I do all of these things? It, it's important to really lay out a plan for how you're communicating through every aspect of the transaction or your marketing. And um, I was talking with a realtor over the weekend who said that, you know, even though she knew how important or how, how much she could streamline some of her communications or, um, you know, hold virtual meetings and that kind of thing, she just didn't do it before because that wasn't how she'd done it in, in the past. And so I think um, being able to, you know, facilitate, like make a little bit more of a plan. She was able to now hold all of her meetings virtually and was finding that she's going to continue doing that after, um, after all of this passes as well. So um, anyway, I put together a few just kind of tips as I, I was thinking about where, where our work is going and, and what we're working on um, at the moment when it comes to both how you're bringing leadership to your teams as well as to your consumers. And um, one of the topics that I speak on frequently is on the gig economy. And, um, and so as a reminder, there are so many people that are already, you know, living in this kind of lifestyle. Many people in this industry already have made a full digital transition. Um, but there's also a lot of, a lot of people that are struggling through, through this time. So um, a few of the work from home tips that we had put together for those that are in the gig economy, this isn't as much focus on, um, on necessarily as a mortgage professional, um, but I think it relates really well to some of the topics that Renee was talking about and can be applied anywhere. Um, one is to make sure that you have a morning routine. And I liked that Renee was talking about kind of opening and closing the day with these check-ins or however you want to structure it, but, but really put together a structure in your day. Uh, I know I can get stuck in, in just kind of flowing with the day rather than taking control over it. And that's really important when we're thinking about how to, how to hold a, a virtual office. Um, and then secondly, embrace video calling, which I'll share a little bit more about here in a second scheduling regular check-ins and breaks. So if you, even if you are completely on your own and just, you know, doing your own, you're a loan officer and independent from anyone on your team or in your office, it's helpful to have someone that you're checking in with. And um, maybe it's a, even a friend or colleague that you can have these check-ins, um, but it, it allows you to have a sense of, a, a higher sense of structure and have some accountability like Renee was talking about. And especially during these times where we are more isolated, we, in order to, you know, it really fits in with Renee talking about how, how do we live our lives above the line. If you are feeling down and you're feeling isolated, your productivity is going to be shot as well. And so, um, I, you know, having scheduling video calls rather than having 
time on the phone makes a big difference even to your productivity, even if you don't feel like that's the case. Like you may think, and I always think this whenever I'm about to get on video, I'm like, oh, do we really need to do video right now? And, uh, but it makes a big difference in your, like the way that our brains work. We, we feel connected and bonded and therefore more productive overall if we're able to look at someone in the eyes. And, um, and so same thing goes for, for taking breaks, you know, making sure that you are scheduling, even if you need to set alarms, scheduling breaks to walk around. Um, or do some squats or push-ups or something to just get the blood flowing as you're not able to maybe get out as much as, as you were in the past. But taking care of those basic needs um, and in uh, and, and your body in order to be productive. And then um, some collaborative tools, which I'll talk about here a sec in a second. And then creating your space in a way that really makes you happy. Like I, I tend to, I actually completely have been living out of my suitcase for a while. And I make sure that I have essential oils that I travel with and certain things that make me feel good and productive. And in any space, then you can create this kind of sense of I'm focused now and I'm, you know, I'm going to be uplifted in this moment. So, so in the midst of all of this fear, or whatever, if you need to you know, reorganize your space or just create some kind of sense of calm in the space that you're working in. I think that's a really important thing to, and step to take in order to, for you to not only be sane, but also really improve your productivity. So um, I'll walk through a couple of these, these just really quickly and then we can talk more about it. Um, and we'd love to hear more about how you guys are, are working in this, but um, a few things to keep in mind to continue to grow your business. And again, I know it is a refi boom, but as Renee was talking about, eventually this, the way that the cycle works, you're going to, your agent, you don't want your agents to feel neglected during this time or for, we don't know what the market's going to do. Just making sure that you're staying connected through social media during this time in a way that is again, structured and controlled. Like you do not want to get lost in social media. And that's a huge problem that a lot of people have. And, and I definitely, it, it doesn't feel good when you get on Instagram or wh whatever, and you're just scrolling through the newsfeed and seeing all these negative things. That's not the kind of connected on social media that I'm talking about. I mean, it, staying in t seeing who, who your, what your partners are posting on their, um, their stories, for instance, and responding there or specifically, you know, sharing something that is going to be uh, positive or um, bring some kind of leadership that isn't fear focused, but staying in touch, social media is a great way to stay in touch with people, have good discussions um, and bring a positive leadership in the midst of this time that can also help you stand out. Second, again, is about using video. Um, you know, you can use things like Zoom, which we're on right now, FaceTime. The agent that I was talking to over the weekend said she did an inspection over FaceTime. And even though it wasn't as great as whether as if she were there in person, she was able to calm the buyer's or the seller's nerves and, um, and really be present with her. And so um, just even if it's just a check-in with someone, do it over video. Like I was saying before, we, we actually release oxytocin when we look at someone in the eyes and that tends to, that makes us feel more bonded and, and our, our bodies are going to feel better just by having that kind of human interaction in some way. Um, and I think you will find that that really feeds into the rest of the way that you run your business after this as well, because it, it really bonds you with someone. And something that I was talking about, um, I talked about before all this crisis hit was um, how much, if, if you look at someone eye to eye and you meet with someone face to face over video, they're way less likely to shop around because they feel that bond with you. And so they feel like they can trust you. And, and with 92% of millennials not trusting banks and it's so many in, in our generation and in our society just don't trust salespeople or this industry at all, having video in order to build trust is such a great, um, great tool that's at your fingertips. And it's really important that you make use of that. A few tips, and I, I don't need to, I'll go through these really quickly, but for a great digital meeting are to, again, have structure. So structure is a common theme through all of this. Um, set an agenda. Uh, you can make sure that you have a quiet space and it's not, I mean, if you got, you're stuck in a 
you know, small space with your kids or whatever, you can do what you can right now. But um, use your, if you're on a team call, use the mute button to make sure that everyone is able to be heard. Um, and give your full attention on, on these meetings. It's obvious when you're not paying attention, especially over video. Um, and then at the end, make sure you discuss your next steps. So it's, it's again, having structure. Here's what we're going to talk about at the end. Here's what our next steps are. And then you follow up with, here's, here's again, those next steps. That makes this a very productive and, um, and overall, you know, just a, a more productive and fruitful time. And then uh, be responsive. This is the case all the time, but especially during this time when people have higher anxiety, um, just being able to quickly respond to people's questions or, um, or being able to, you know, text over a quick question rather than, than I don't know, if it doesn't require a long conversation, just text the, the question or text the quick response. And I think that can go a, a long way to calming people and, and people feeling a little bit more secure. Um, a few tools to keep in mind for this kind of quick communication, obviously text, but also social media. Um, you can, if you're, if you're already having a conversation on social media, you can direct message them. Um, video messages are also really great right now because again, it, it adds that face value. And this is something that I, I still think it's so important across the board. If you're, if you're not able to get on the phone with someone or on a video call with someone, send them a video of what you're talking about. Or if you're sending them a long email, send them a video of what's in that email. It, it doesn't take any amount of time longer than if you left them a voice message. But if you send them the video, it, it, it's again, it gives a sense of safety and security for your, your consumer or whoever is receiving that message. Obviously, Mortgage Coach is an incredible tool during this time and always. And then team collaboration tools like Google Docs and Slack. Those are two that I use. A lot of people use Trello. Um, Google Docs allows you, if you don't use it already, if you're working with anyone, it is just an amazing tool to be able to collaborate on different documents or um, slideshows, whatever, and be able to see those updates in real time. So that's something that our team, Google Docs and Slack have been just incredible for a remote team to be able to, to utilize. And then lastly, just remembering to always keep things um, really personal, especially during this time. And remember, as we've been talking about how much of a, a difficult and stressful time this is for a lot of people. And, um, you know, donate to your your local food bank, try to be present in your community, even in the midst of a time when, you know, you may be swamped with work, just, I think, being able to invite others to participate with you in, um, in giving to the food bank or, or whatever you're able to do to support others can not only be a, a really high impact and, um, you know, an activity that makes you feel good, it's helping others, but also it, that, that is a good brand builder as well and community builder to invite others to participate in coming together for this kind of positive um, way that you can impact your community. And I think it's important to remember that in the midst of chaos, there's always a, a big opportunity and you have an opportunity to be a leader during this time that is, um, I think, you know, an opportunity to, to be a leader in making this digital transition that maybe some things you've been postponing to adopt that now you're kind of forced to do that and set in some systems in place that are going to be impactful long term to your business and increase your efficiency and all of that, but also be able to, um, to create some positive leadership in your networks and in your communities. So, Love. Yeah, love, open it for love that. What, what else did you have, Kristen? I see some more things. Yeah. Well, I just put this in here. If you if you don't have any, you know, a lot of support around social media, we do have a social media subscription program as well that has all financial literacy oriented content. So I just wanted to share that, but would like to open it up for questions or discussion. Cool. So so two things. One, people, a few people asked for the slides. Would you mind sharing those in the group? And to yep. a link to your social media support, put a link down below. Check it out, guys. Uh, my Friday interview with Kristen was awesome, where she talked about concepts that she learned as a social worker, helping people that are going through traumatic experiences, trauma, 
And, and so a lot of those concepts just apply to the mortgage industry today. So check out that interview. So you are writing that article. Is that going to be for Housing Wire? Are we going to see that in Housing Wire in the next couple of days? Yeah, it'll be in Housing Wire today or tomorrow. Okay, cool. Uh, coincidentally, I saw a post from Clayton Collins yesterday on LinkedIn, and it was a, a quote from you know the current president of the NBA. I'm just going to read it out loud because it was just so on mission. Uh, the mortgage industry, the mortgage industry, can best support the economy and unleash billions of dollars of financial stimulus by helping Americans refinance into lower rates, thereby freeing up resources for them to spend on their needs and their necessities. So I just think it's important to recognize, guys, we are in a business that's making a lot of money, we're having personal highlights, how blessed are we? Not the case for most people in most industries. We actually get to work and what we do for a living, especially in today's refi market, can unleash billions of dollars for families. So let's get after it. We have a great righteous mission. What I want to do right now is I, well, hang on. Can you still hear me, Kristen? Yep, okay. Yeah. What, what I want to do right now is I want to walk you guys through the ultimate digital mortgage experience. Can, and then I, I'm going to bring in- one, one super fast thing. That just, Go ahead, I just want to make sure you don't do this. I just, I just based on this, what I heard Kristen say, we, it's terms of productivity and everything. If you're listening to this and you're not good at marketing, I'm not a good marketer and I don't think it kills me. I, but I realize that there are people that are really good at it. And if you have, if Kristen, you really truly have a, a subscription model that I can just write a small check every month and you're creating content for me, that will free you up to do everything that Dave is talking about. But if you're taking up hours and hours of your time trying to come up with content where professionals have already done it, save yourself pay for the marketing, pay for the social media help and do that and move on to what you're best at. I just wanted to say that I think it's powerful. Kristen, please send that to me or whatever you need for that. Thank Love you. it. Thank you, Renee. So Keith, guys, I'm gonna I, gotta, ask I do you, gotta hop off too, just so you know, Dave. Not a problem. Thanks guys. Thank you for your time, brother, and your leadership. All right. So, so this is actually a picture of Jay Kroll. We did 170 million in volume last year. I interviewed him a few days ago on the ultimate in-person experience. Now he talked about his in-person experience because prior to a week ago, 50% of his families were coming into his office, but he also described his digital experience. And I haven't checked in with him in the past week, but I, I'm sure in Seattle, most of his clients are getting a digital experience. But you'll notice this is in-person experience. This is Kelly Zitlow's in-person experience. So when she has that first conversation, there's no technology. It's just, what are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your goals? In today's market, we should be having that conversation on our phone every chance we get, whether it's FaceTime, whether it's Zoom, there's a personal connection. And then what I want to do is I want to show what Josh Metal is doing. You know, this is Denise Donahue. I'm sure she's not having as many coffee meetings in Dallas, Texas right now, where she's walking them through. So how do we take this to the digital land? And, and this is the playbook, guys. Josh would have that five minute to 10 minute conversation. And then and I'm gonna put this video in the group right after this. And then he would use this tripod, his mobile phone, and he'd leave like a one minute video. Personal connection, communicate, and this is what it looks like and sounds like. Hey Chad, Josh Miller, we did a mortgage. Good chatting with you, buddy. Uh, enjoy, enjoy what you did and uh, go through. So keep hoping you get it. Personally connect, no more football. I will send you that's my personal contact card. Please save that if you need me. Don't hesitate to text me. That's, that's Digital friend connection. Most of the time. So, uh, but feel free if you need me after hours on the weekend, you can get text that way. I'll also then send you a text message with a link to the Fairway Now mobile app. This is digital transaction. Link. Please click on the Fast, link. efficient, Download digital. the mobile app from the App Store. Then launch the app and click on the client questionnaire. Once you've completed the client questionnaire, client questionnaire data, equals 1003. As I said, it's preliminary information. I'll, I'll backfill anything that you missed. Just fill it out to the best of your ability. Probably shouldn't take you more than 10 or 15 minutes from your mobile device, and then we'll jump in and get going from there. If you could also send me a copy of the purchase agreement, that would be great. My email is josh at joshmetal.com. It will also be in the contact card I send you, and uh, we'll be in contact soon. Take care, buddy. So, so again, I mentioned earlier, I will be releasing a full March Madness refi playbook 
that will not only include this, but it will include the questions he's asking in the refi, the scripts he's using to, to talk about solutions. One of the quotes Josh has is, strategy always trumps rate. So how he's delivering strategies. So guys, it's really simple. It's a text message. It's driving your digital experience. Now it's, been, it's never been more important. Have that so you can just cut and paste. And then, and then make sure you're giving them a total cost analysis. You want a digital app, now you want to give digital advice. This is what it looks like on a mobile device. What does this also have? It has graphs and charts. It has transparency. It has all the information you need for every client. At the end of the day, guys, this is what we're trying to do. And there's never been a better time to do it. Now, I don't advocate violence, but this is my favorite borrower testimonial after a mortgage coach experience last year. The time you spent explaining my loan options with mortgage coach it makes me want to find the past two lenders and punch them in the face. I mean, that is the opportunity, guys, that we can drive in today's market. So, so here at Mortgage Coach, we have never been more committed to helping you make the digital transition, become a black belt at mortgage advice, and do it through just the three principles of Mortgage Coach, advice, technology, and content. So, so um, Keith, Thank you for making it, brother. I asked you to come to this call because one, you're a loan officer that uses technology really well. So first of all, if you could just give us the list, like one minute, this is the tech I'm using. And then I know you had a question and I want to get it out to the community and then I'll bring you back in, Kristen. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at, I'm changing my, my technology that I'm using right now, just in this time. I think we can, we, we have to, we have to get more efficient. And, um, and I loved everything that she had said about um, how we work in this time. Um, but technology, I'm using bomb bomb, um, mortgage coach. Absolutely. And the mortgage coach live is probably one of my favorite technologies in a borrower presentation. Um, it's weird. I, I probably three years ago, I met with maybe 90% of my customers in faith uh, in person. And in the last year, year and a half, it, it's not by me changing my systems borrowers. I just, it's, it's, it's challenging for me to get borrowers to want to come in. It's interesting when you say he closes $170 million in production and 50% of his borrowers come in. I, I got to take notes because I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. But um, so uh, bomb bomb uh, video um, uh, mortgage coach. Um, I use zoom uh, zoom videos. And then one of the things with texting that I think is really cool is, and I don't know how you do this on an Android, but um, I use text drafts. Um, so on an Apple, on an iPhone, iOS, you can do text drafts. And I probably have 10 or 15 different text drafts that I have set up based on different things that I frequently send to customers. Um, and I don't think most people know that you can do that. So I, I'm, I'm probably, I'm guessing that Josh on his, Josh Metal on his, that's a text draft that he has set up. And then he just, he just does the video. And then I do text videos after every conversation with a borrower. So you taught me this, Dave, just hold your phone uh, up to a wall, up to the glass, um, put it on, on selfie mode that just keeps it stable and then just shoot a quick, you know, 30 second video to send out to the customer just to engage and recap the conversation. So I'm sending that out to everybody. Um, one of the things that I just started doing now, and I think it, it resonates with what you said earlier is I hired somebody to do all my editing. And so video editing, and uh, you'll notice now everything's got kind of an organized tile, a look and a feel. And so basically I'm just recording video. I think about something, anytime a borrower asks me a question, I have a list. And so I just write down that question, I speak to it, and then I'm just uploading it to him in Dropbox. He's editing it, he has access to all my social media, and then he's posting it for me. And so that's removed. Um, it's a lot of work to edit the video, type up the content, post it to everything, and then engage. And so that's, that's taken a lot off my plate and allowed me to be a whole lot more efficient. I think that's one of the biggest things that I've added. But what I'm most excited about right now is the opportunity that we have to be the calm in the storm that people seek. And I think now more than ever, there's an opportunity for me on the other side of this to potentially have every single real estate agent in my market know who I am. Um, because they're all scared and looking for someone to help them find ways that they're going to get through this. And I think through video and Zoom chats, I can be that person because now more than ever, it's, it's forcing us to act in a way where like me going out and do one-on-one -on -one meetings, we can't do that anymore, but it's more efficient for me to actually have a meeting with hundred agents at one point in time. And I'm looking to do as many of those as possible. So where this came from, and this is the question is, um, 
with my guy that's doing my editing, I'm bringing agents in once a quarter and we're doing a market update. I, I think, I, I don't understand why real estate agents don't do market updates for their sphere on social media to send out to their previous customers to do targeted ads. And so I've been bringing them in, doing an update with them because sometimes they're uncomfortable on video. Um, we're recording the whole thing and then I'm just sending it to my guy. He's editing everything. We're putting, you know, over slides over, over the video to, you know, show market statistics and things like that, but I can't do that anymore. And so I'm trying to figure out a way where I can do a zoom, almost a zoom type call where they're at home. I'm at home. We do the same content and it's recorded. And then I send it up to my guy to do the editing. And then I'm still in this, in this time, helping my agents with their, with their, with their videos. So no, why, why, why does zoom not work for what you want? Well, so Zoom works and, it, and I think it will, but what I don't like about Zoom is the space. So, so when you're in a Zoom, when you're in a Zoom chat and you know, there's a vertical line separating the two of you, there's a whole bunch of space on the top and the bottom. I can't figure out, and that was my question to you, is I can't figure out how to eliminate that space on the top and bottom and just make us full screen. Does that make Got sense? It. So well, let's do this. Let's not get into the weeds of those yes. editing notes, but Mortgage Coach Community, if you have suggestions, whether it's editing, editing suggestions, a way to shoot the video that's better than Zoom, put your comments down below. Keith, also, if you could share a little more on that text idea. I thought that was super slick. Kristen, do you have any questions for Keith? Because I want to make sure you get research for your article. I want to make sure more people comment on your post. By the way, guys, her research post is in the announcement section of our Facebook group. Please give Chris, Chris, please answer Kristen's questions. But what questions do you have for Kate? Uh, well, I guess just for the audience, I would love to, to hear from you if you're doing anything similar. I absolutely love, Keith, that you are doing the follow-up videos. That does not take long at all, but it, it's so meaningful. And so anyway, I, I love what you're doing with that and the fact that this is such a big opportunity to bring peace or, you know, some kind of safety, sense of safety and, um, and leadership to make this digital transition with your referral partner. So I don't have any questions necessarily at the time, but I'm a big fan of what you're doing. Love, love that. I'm a big fan too. And notice that he's adopting that. This is a time for every realtor in my market to know me because they're on social, they're doing more screen time than ever. I have trained myself. I know how to use video. I use mortgage coach. For those of you who aren't trained, guys, you can be trained in two weeks. You can learn mortgage coach in a couple days. All of this you can learn and you can use this opportunity to make the digital transition so that when we do come out of this, you're trained up on how to be a digital mortgage ninja. So get on that. Uh, this Friday, I'm gonna be interviewing Bill Hillstadt, who in my mind is Facebook marketing guru. He's got an idea that he's saying, Dave, literally in all of my years of marketing, everything I'm doing with Facebook, it's the most amazing idea and strategy ever. He's gonna be unleashing that. And, and I would say part of it, Keith, you might wanna check it out because he's, well, you definitely wanna check it out, but he's gonna be talking about interviews and how to use Zoom. Um, although I will bring it up with him, what are some other ways that we can shoot and edit? But he's gonna be talking about what are the top Facebook marketing strategies so that you can use this as an opportunity to become the digital mayor in blank. You know, you wanna be the digital mayor in Sacramento? Here we go. You want to be the digital mayor on doctor loans or reverse mortgages or VA loans, you know, whatever it is, we're going to be covering that this Friday at nine o'clock. So Kristen, any other questions for Keith or anything you want to close out today's call? On? I don't think so. This is really insightful. I think, you know, just over to summarize a lot of this is having structure in place and, and having a strategy for your digital communication for staying in touch with your agents and bringing that sense of safety and, and human interaction to them through video. And then, um, and having a, you know, bringing positive leadership in, in this time of, of chaos. So Krista, before you wrap, remind everybody, I mean, we did a whole call on Friday from your article, but what are the, is it five or six five, things? Yeah. What are the five? Remind everybody. Yeah, it's interesting that this is really relevant now. So we talked about trauma-informed care model, which is something that we apply in social work and psychology. 
Um, but applying it in financial services is great where people don't trust and there's a lot of, you know, some like traumatic tra trauma around um, how we approach finances. So those five tenants are one, safety, two, transparency, three, choice, four, collaboration, and five, empowerment. So you can check out my article on Housing Wire on, um, I'm, I think it's called Millennials Don't Trust Lenders, something, how do we how do we solve this? But, um, and then our call from Friday where we really expand on some practical ways to, to use that model in, in the mortgage industry. Yeah, so it's, guys, it's a fantastic article. And if you look at Renee's Courage Scale, all of those things would raise where you're at in the Courage Scale. And I don't care who you are. I have experienced fear over the past 48 hours, over the past two weeks. And, and I am having to practice box breathing in a more intentional way and scheduling to take my three walks a day. So I don't care who you are, how strong you are. I am obnoxiously optimistic. Uh, so my wife isn't, so we're a good balance or I'd just be crazy boy. Uh, but wherever you're at, that trauma, what, what's it called again? Trauma? Trauma-informed care. Love that. <laughs> Listen to the whole hour. We, we took it and we said, okay, Here's this platform. How can a mortgage professional use this with millennials? And in today's Corona world, how can we use it with everybody? It's super powerful. Keith, any last words you have or any questions you want to ask the community before we wrap this up? Yeah, man, I, I think, so the text draft thing is real easy. You can Google that and I'll, I'll do a, like a little video and I'll post it showing people how to do a text, set up a text draft, it's awesome. I think every single loan officer right now needs to get on Zoom and needs to do uh, just interaction with your, with your realtors. Um, if you have collateral within your company to do lunch and learns, take them to Zoom. There's gonna be realtors that are sitting at home um, that are working from home and you have an amazing opportunity to provide content to them to go out and, and, and build their business. So I think I, I, I was kind of aggressively thinking I'm gonna do it every single week, but I might. If I don't do a lunch and learn every week, I'm gonna do it every other, but I'm gonna do a mastermind weekly. Um, and then th what I got from this call was there's a significant amount of people that don't know how to work from home. Um, and, uh, my wife and I were talking about it this morning, just like just the habit of getting ready in the morning, like, you know, uh, earlier, even though you're staying at home. And so I'm going to do a lot more research on strategies and ways to be more efficient at home. And then I'm going to start doing video about that because there's a, there's a significant amount of people that, that have not experienced this at all. And I think there's a, a void that we can fill. And then I would, I would end it with this. This is something I heard the other day that I thought was really powerful. And it's success starts with you. Significance starts with others. And so I think now in this time with, with the kind of the fear that we're in, you're saying, hey, I've experienced fear in the 48 hours, in the last 48 hours. I have too. My family has. It's a, it's a weird, interesting time. And if everything that we can do, we can start with thinking about others first. I think there's a significant opportunity to make change and bring peace and calm to this time. Um, and, and we'll come out of this. Um, much better for it. Love, love those thoughts. So my closing thought is first of all, I'll say thank you to the mortgage coach community. We hit a milestone in our YouTube channel yesterday of 10,000 subscribers. So really, thank you. That channel would not be what it is if it was not for Keith, you, Kristen, you, Renee, all the people that I interview that are just amazing. You know, they've got mortgage coach values. They have mortgage coach stories. And, and, and what are mortgage coach stories, mortgage coach, you know, values, advice, leadership, using technology. Those are, those are the cornerstones, all powered by this amazing community. So, so thank you to everyone that I interviewed that's part of that YouTube channel. Thank you to everyone that clicked the subscribe button so that you get the upload when it happens. And thanks for everyone that uses this as a channel to learn. So I appreciate you, the mortgage coach community, appreciate you. And the team that runs Mortgage Coach appreciates you. So this call is a wrap. If you got value, give us a like. Share it with your mortgage friends. Kristen, thank you as always. And Keith, thank you for popping in last minute. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Take care. Renee, take care. Thank you for all your leadership.